Hello everyone. Today's video is about that how you can predict the number of disulfide bonds in your proteins or given protein sequences. So for this, you can use a very important tool that is disulfide by design to a tool. So how you can use this tool and how you can interpret the results of this tool. So that will be clear in this video. In order to access the this tool, just open your browser and here just type disulfide by design to so you can pick here now this is the website that is cpt web dot cpt dot yna dot edu so this is the main website so just click here as you click here this is the home page of this tool now here you can enter your data by three options like either you can choose the pdb file pdb stand for protein data bank means you can upload the pdb file here by clicking this upload button or you can also search by this pdb id or you can also load the samples which are available these are the example samples which are available with this tool and this is a version of this tool that is 2.13 now at this time i am going with this pdb id so just enter your pdb id here and click this button get from rcsb.org as you click there so it will take few seconds and after few seconds your result will be there now as you can see these are your results now how to interpret these results so here now results before results these are the basic informations of your sequence which you just chosen through that id so here that was hydrolase and uploaded on the pdb 10th june 80 1988 this is the pdb id the title is the structure of phosphate free ribonuclease a read are refined at 1.26 angstrom so this is the title this is again this is the pdb id the residue of that protein contain 124 amino acids it has only one chain now it also has secondary structure so in the secondary structure helix means alpha helical here this helix so it is the alpha helix so it contain 26 percent alpha helix and there are three alpha helix and which are composed of 33 amino acid residue means amino acids and beta sheets so it also have 76 percent of these beta sheets out of which four are beta sheets 14 are strands so when it is in you can say duplicate it is called as beta sheet and when the strand is single it is called as strand so there are four beta sheets 14 strands and which are composed of these 95 residues or amino acid it has only one model because it has only one chain this is the beta factor what is this beta factor so beta factor is also known as the waller factor or temperature factor or atomic displacement factor so actually this factor it helps during the x-ray crystallography for x-ray annotation means during the experimental way it helps in finding the x-ray annotations and it has a range mostly proteins have 20 to 40 angstrong of this beta factor now in order to find out the disulfide bond so here in the left hand section first of all you have to choose that what kind of disulfide bond you want to predict or see so here intra chain means you want to see the disulfide bond within a chain inter chain means you want to see the disulfide linkages between two different chains means interchains and here built c beta for glycine as you know the glycine cause hindrance in the disulfide bond formation so you can also see this here this chi 3 is the torsion angle and the range of this torsion angle is minus 80 deg 87 degree to plus 97 and here you can choose the data of plus minus 30 you can change it you can see plus minus 35 or 30 so just keep it as by default so now torsion angle will be displaced in this range with plus minus 30 value so by choosing these options now you have to click on run after clicking run it will show you the disulfide linkages so just click run it will take few seconds now you can see the results are just coming here so these are the residues residue means the amino acid residue 1 and 2 means one amino acid and second amino acid so how to read this this is the chain and these are the sequence means position 20th position this is the amino acid ala means alanine and here the structural column second in the residue this is the chain then sequence number amino acid that is tyrosine the structure that it involved in the 
helix structure and these are about the disulfide bond the property of disulfide bond so this is the as i told chi 3 means this is your torsion angle whose range is minus 87 to plus 97 and you choose plus minus 3 degree here in this case torsion angle the positive torsion angles they shows that means when the torsion torsion angle is positive so it shows that the there is more probability of formation of disulfide linkage as you can see these are the negative values but in case of positive value you can say that there is more probability or ability to form disulfide bond this is the bond energy which is in the kilo calorie per mole so this is the bond energy the range of this bond energy is generally from 0.89 kilo calorie per mole to 8.35 kilo calorie per mole so this is the range again repeating 0.89 kilo calorie per mole to 8.35 kilo calorie per mole and this is the beta factor so i just earlier explain you that it is a temperature factor or you can say it is also called as de waller factor or atomic displacement factor and its range is again repeating range is between for most of protein 20 to 40 degree angstrom so here you can see this value so first is alanine so what it means that alanine at the 20th position can make the disulfide bond with tyrosine which is present at this 25th position and the this you can say torsion angle is this bond energy is 1.43 and beta factor is 22.40 similarly for the second one that is the chain is same the position is 26th now amino acid is 16 its structure is alpha helix and it can make the disulfide bond with another amino acid which is present at 84 position that is 16 and which is available or which is involved in the sheet formation beta sheet formation and these are the property of the disulfide bond made by these one and two residue so in this way you can see that which amino acid making disulfide bond with which another amino acid and these are the bond properties so this is in the analysis tab now you can also see the secondary structure of this protein so just click here that is secondary structure as you click here now in this diagram these are the legends which are showing you that how you can read this diagram so here this gold arrow they represent the beta sheets this magenta coil they represent the helix while this gold bars they are the formation of disulfide bonds or you can say these are the disulfide bonds this red bar is the selected sulfide bond and this range this is the range of beta factor with minimum dark blue and as the beta factor increase so its color will change from blue to red and dark red so this is the range of beta factor now as you can clearly see here this is the alpha helix and this is also the alpha helix these arrow these are the beta sheets and while this gold bar they represent the disulfide bond so now you can see that the disulfide bond in your protein selected you can also see this in 3d view if you click here in the 3d view now the data will be available in the 3d diagram here it takes some time if it doesn't load so you can just click here to reload it you can click here so that it will reload it so as i click there now it is loaded here this structure it is in the form of cartoon so means the layout or representation of this 3d structure is cartoon you can move it and drag it and you can see these gold one these gold one these are the disulfide bond this will be more clear in another layout that is wire frame wire so you can change the representation of this diagram by clicking this wire frame as you click there now you can see the diagram is changed and here these gold bars these represent the disulfide bond you can zoom it by placing your arrow here and just rotate your mouse wheel to zoom in or zoom out so as i am zooming in so now you can see these golden bars they represent the disulfide bonds so there are four disulfide bond in this protein that is 1 2 3 and 4 so by this you can see the disulfide bond in 3d diagram again if you come back to this analysis point now there is one more option that you can also see that if there will be any mutation in this protein so there will be any effect on disulfide bonds or not so in this case you have to select first amino acid like for example if i am selecting this that if serine is change to lysine means if the serine 
दिस सीरिन अमाइन एसिड चेंज टू लाइसिन सो विल देर बी म्यूटेशन और इफ देर इज ए म्यूटेशन मीन्स द सीरिन टू लाइसिन सो इज देर बी इज देर विल बी एनी इफेक्ट ऑफ दिस म्यूटेशन ऑन द नंबर ऑफ डाइसोलोफाइड बॉन्ड सो बाई सेलेक्टिंग दिस टू अमाइन एसिड जस्ट क्लिक हेयर क्रिएट और व्यू म्यूटेंट एज यू क्लिक हेयर नाउ इट विल टेक सम टाइम इन ऑर्डर टू जनरेट द डायग्राम ऑफ दिस म्यूटेंट सो नाउ कैन यू कैन सी दिस इज द ओरिजिनल प्रोटीन एंड हेयर दिस इज द प्रोटीन विच विल फॉर्मड आफ्टर दैट म्यूटेशन नाउ यू कैन चेंज इट्स ले आउट ऑल्सो सो दैट यू कैन कंपेयर दैम बोथ सो नाउ जस्ट क्लिक हेयर वायर फ्रेम एज यू क्लिक हेयर नाउ यू कैन सी दैट दिस दिस इज द डायग्राम और रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ योर म्यूटेंट प्रोटीन दिस इज द ओरिजिनल हाउ यू कैन कंपेयर सो न्यू नाउ यू कैन सी दैट हेयर देर आर फोर डाइसल्फाइड बॉन्ड एज आई shown you earlier but here if you see now just zooming it now you can see that there are six disulfide bond first second third fourth fifth and sixth means now you can predict that as you change the uh, that amino acid means as you create the mutation so after creating the mutation the number of disulfide bond has been increased because in the original there are four disulfide bond while after mutant there will be Six disulfide bond there. Now by this way you can also see the mutated protein and its disulfide bond. So this is you can say by all this you can predict the that whether your given sequence or protein where it will form disulfide bond or if it will form disulfide bond. So how many disulfide bond will be there? So in this way you can analyze or interpret the results given by this disulfide by design two tool. so that's all for today guys see you in the next video thank you very much